Hey riders, welcome to another video in our Adventure Motorcycle Gear Review Series. I'm Eric Lang with Ride Adventures and I've been riding and guiding motorcycle trips around the world for a long time now. And in my riding career, I've tested a lot of different dual sport helmets for adventure riders. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk through six of the most popular adventure bike helmets in the market today. And I really think I can help you decide which one's the right one for you. So let's get into character. Exciting but daunting task choosing the right motorcycle helmet for all that adventure riding you're going to be doing. You know, we depend on helmets for the obvious safety reasons, but they've also got to work well behind the windscreen that you're following and the bike that you're going to be on. It's got to be comfortable. It's got to look good. It's got to be within budget, right? In this video, I'm going to walk through some of the technical aspects and the features that separates each of these helmets from the others. I'm going to share some very clear thoughts on what's going to help you decide which helmet is best for you. I'm going to wrap it up by sharing some thoughts about life inside a helmet, life on the road, things I've come to learn and little tips and tricks after many years and a lot of miles out there traveling. So what makes a dual sport or an adventure helmet to begin with? Well, each of these helmets have the main features that I think make an adventure or a dual sport helmet. I'm gonna walk through what those features are here and then we'll get into some of the specific features of each one of them. So first, to me, a dual sport helmet must be full face. It's gotta have a chin bar, something for full facial protection like that. As we're riding, we're basically going forward, and guess what, if something happens, what's the first part of your body or your head that's probably gonna make contact with something? So best to cover your jaw and your face like that. Helmets like this also have a shield, which represents to me the best eye protection for higher speeds, and having that closed shield also helps in terms of wind and noise reduction, when, especially when compared to goggles. The helmet also has to be compatible with goggles in case you're in those situations off-road probably where you want that kind of eye protection and also prefer having a little more airflow going through the helmet. It's got to have a visor, which is also sometimes called a peak. You know, this is used for blocking out the sun, obviously, but also if you're out with those types of buddies that like to sling poop roosters at you, they've got rocks and dirt and mud hitting up at you, you can just tip your forehead forward a little bit and get that peak down to block some of that from hitting you in the eyes. The helmet's got to have good enough aerodynamics to be good at highway speeds. It's got to be comfortable enough to flow through the air because we're not always doing 20 miles an hour in the dirt. It's got to be significantly quieter at those highway speeds than a motocross helmet would be. Lastly, it's got to have good enough airflow to be comfortable in slower speeds, like when you're in off-road situations in the hottest weather. If you've ever dropped a bike or come up with some other kind of physical challenge during Songkran in Thailand during the Thai New Year celebration and if there's nobody there to squirt you with a squirt gun you will quickly see how important airflow is through your helmet. So each of these helmets I'm going to walk through has each of the aforementioned features again making them what I consider to be a dual sport or an adventure style helmet. We've got a range from budget options to premium picks and we've ruled out those that are either cheap or just cheaply made. So we've got the Arai XD4, the Klein Cryos Pro, the Klein Cryos Carbon Adventure, the Showy Hornet X2, the Bell MX-9 Adventure MIPS, and the Scorpion EXO AT950. One of these helmets in particular represents what I think is an amazing value when you consider all the features and capabilities it has. So let's get started. First on our list, the pioneer that actually started this adventure or dual sport helmet market, and that's the Arai XD4. It was about 20 years ago that they introduced their first XD model, and folks didn't quite know what to make of it because the adventure bike market was really just still getting started. Since then, of course, a lot of other manufacturers have followed suit and added some of these features to their helmets. This one has not evolved a whole lot, actually, compared to the others. You know, it's got the aforementioned features that I think make it a dual sport adventure helmet. It's got that peak, it's got the shield, it's got excellent airflow. It's a very well-built helmet. Some might claim it is the quietest for them in the entire list of options we have, but it really doesn't have a whole lot of unique features to it. So a couple of features it does have that set it aside are a five millimeter removable temple pad. So just inside the helmet there, if you need a little bit more space around the temple of your head, there's a couple of five millimeter pads that you can peel away. And I do like that they have these emergency tabs to pull away from the inside. You can pull the liner out in an emergency situation, if you have an injured rider, it's easier to extract the helmet from the person's head because of these removable tabs. But again, not a really amazing helmet these days in terms of features and options. Definitely still a quality option though, for those of you who are interested. 
So next up is the Climb Cryos Carbon Adventure. And the absolute standout feature for this helmet, you'll notice as soon as you pick it up, is how extremely lightweight it is. It comes out at less than 1500 grams and you will know it, it's extremely lightweight. It has a lot of features in common with its brother here in the same category. It comes with a full carbon fiber hand laid shell. It's got a fully adjustable forehead vent. So if you wanna open or close that forehead vent, you have that option. It also comes with these pin lock tabs in there so you can help yourself in foggy situations and keep your vision clear. And both are also Senna 10U compatible for those of you who want uh, communication systems. A few features that the Klein Cryos Pro comes with in addition to its Carbon Adventure brother would be that it's made from this choroid energy absorbing material in the liner. So basically your impact resistance and your energy absorption in the case of a crash is done with choroid instead of a typical EPS foam like most other helmets are made these days. And you can read about it yourself online. Choroid is a really unique system of high-tech welded plastic tubes that again, as you look into it, you'll see that it's really a highly efficient and effective energy absorbing material for making a helmet from. This one also has a fully adjustable chin vent in addition to the aforementioned forehead vents that you can open and close. It also comes with the Transitions Photochromic Shield. So in addition to the clear one, now you'll have the option to have the Photochromic Transitions which adapts and adjusts to sunlight conditions as you ride throughout the day. It needs a direct uh, impact with the sunlight in order to make those changes, but you will notice it getting darker for you and lighter when you need it to be. Instead of having to throw sunglasses on and take them off and deal with that discomfort possibly inside your helmet, a transition shield like this, I am really enjoying myself. And so it's about a $150 option at this time, but it's included and sort of helps justify the difference in price between these two helmets. And lastly, one other feature that the Cryos Pro comes with is their Fidlock strap closure system. So instead of a traditional strap and buckle for the chin strap, you actually have this magnetic latch that is very fast and easy to use plenty secure and a lot of riders are enjoying that. So on to the Shoei Hornet X2, the helmet that if you've been watching our videos and you travel with me or see me around the world, I'm always wearing a Hornet. And that main reason is that I just seem to be an exact shape for Shoei's average helmet or head shape, I guess you could say. You know, each manufacturer has their, their own ideal head shape and I just happen to be a Shoei. And it's part of why I love this helmet, perfectly comfortable for me for those long days out there. Couple unique features it does have, much like the climbs, it also does come with a pin lock capable shield to begin with, but I've actually transitioned, uh, have moved over to this transitions lens, which also has the pin lock. Again, that photochromic capability to adjust with sunlight for me. I no longer have to wear sunglasses beneath the helmet to uh, block out the sun like that. that that shield will adjust for me with the light. It also, like the Arai, actually comes with an emergency quick release system. So emergency personnel or standby people can help you get your helmet off in the case of an emergency with as minimal head or neck movement as is necessary. And then Shoei also has varying thicknesses available for their cheek pads to help you with uh, gaining or losing a little more space inside your helmet. So I think all the helmets ship with the standard size, but then if you need a little more room or a little less, you can request different thicknesses of those cheek pads to make the helmet fit just a little bit better for you. And again, one of the more heavy helmets in the category here, in fact, I think it is the heaviest, um, extremely well built, high quality, and I just love it. I'd see no reason to go with anything else. Although there are some nice features on other helmets, I stick with my showy. I just love the way it fits. The way it fits. It fits. One, two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> Okay, on to the Bell MX-9 Adventure MIPS. Another solid helmet made by a company that's been making helmets for a long time, right? Bell's most unique feature on the MX-9 Adventure MIPS would be that MIPS thing, which stands for Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. And what they've done is create sort of a liner that works inside the helmet to allow some rotation of your head within the helmet if there's an impact or a crash. So, if you kind of picture how that would work, if you were actually hitting the ground with your head, you wouldn't want anything to be sort of stuck or sticking within the helmet. A little bit of give and rotation of your head inside that helmet is just going to help dissipate energy and help avoid a greater injury because of that, that rotation. So that's the major feature that stands out the most. None of the other manufacturers have that type of a MIPS feature inside their helmets. And the other thing that stands out the most about the Bell MX-9 is the low price. On the table here, it is the low price option in the category, but still, 
It has all the features I talked about, the visor, the shield, good airflow through multiple ventilations. Not a lot of vents are opening or openable and closable on this one. There is uh, in the front here, just this one for the chin piece. But yeah, otherwise it's a very basic helmet, very comfortable, very solid and well-built, like I said. Just definitely one of the most basic ones that we're talking about here today. So last but certainly not least, do you remember at the beginning of the video I mentioned one of these helmets being an amazing value given all the features that it comes with? Well, that's the Scorpion EXO AT950. And I'm saying that it's a great value because it has, in addition to all the, some of the features that make all of these adventure dual sport helmets, you know, the visor, UV protecting shield, good airflow and ventilation. In addition to all those features, you also have what they call their speed view drop down visor. So using your left hand here, which is correct, it shouldn't be the right hand because you never take your right hand off the front brake. You have that option to reach up and drop down that dark visor that takes the place of sunglasses or a more expensive transitions lens. So like back to the showy, that's an upgrade or a separate option you would buy the transitions lens or you spend much more for it to come with a helmet like the Climb Cryos Pro. But being able to just reach up there and flip down and have the speed view visor act like sunglasses for you and block out the sun, what a great feature. In addition to that, if you like the idea of a modular helmet, a flip face or a flip up helmet like that, you have that as well. With a simple pull of that tab down by the chin, you're able to pull that up and get clear views, which is a nice thing for communicating with people, by the way. That's one thing I do regret about having the show sometimes is when I'm on the job and I'm trying to talk to our customers out guiding the tour, it's, tar it's difficult to talk through that chin bar. It would be much easier if I wore a, a modular helmet like that. Having that option to be able to flip that up and down Another nice feature if you like that kind of modularity. In regards to their ventilation on the Scorpion is that this chin piece comes with three different positions. You can be closed for no airflow. You can open it to the first position, which is gonna be like a defroster for the inside of your, your shield. Or you can go down to the second position, which is gonna be a defroster and ventilation. So depending on the riding conditions you're in, you've got comfort and, and design features that help you there. And so on top of it all, one of the things that makes this such an amazing value, I say, is that it is on the lower end of the spectrum of the pricing of these helmets here today. So we will include links for that. You can check it out yourself, but this is a very reasonably priced helmet given, again, all the features. The quality of construction is also there. I mean, it does not feel to me quite like a showy, the Climb or the Arai, you know, these, these are you know, more expensive maybe slightly more solidly built helmets. You feel it only when you pick it up. You can't really tell on the camera, but this one's still impressive. I, don't, I wouldn't say it feels cheap in any regard. Again, when you consider the price that you're paying for it and the great many features that it includes. So now the big question, how are you gonna decide which of these dual sport helmets is the right one for you? Well, get ready to pause your screen because in a moment we're going to put up a guide, a chart, to help you see the differences of all these in terms of weight, in terms of noise, and what you can expect to hear inside the helmet. And that'll be basically feedback from our staff and our experiences and some combination with what the internet is saying about these helmets. And we're also going to talk about the key features of each one that might be the deciding factors for you and why you would go with the Arai XD4. Maybe you want that one because it's the best looking, because it's the original, the pioneer in the marketplace. Maybe you like the removable liner feature in emergency situations, or you know you're gonna need that extra five millimeters of space around the temple, and you wanna peel away those pads. Maybe you'll wanna go with one of the Climb Cryos helmets because they're amongst the lightest in the market. Maybe you know you're gonna be back in the woods on the single track a lot more than you are on the open road, and so you prefer that option of a really light helmet. Back to the Cryos Pro, you know, maybe you like that idea of the choroid crash protection system, that high-tech latest technology liner to keep your head safe, or the fact that it comes with a transitions lens, both of them coming with the pin lock option, so you can add that anti-fog insert, but actually coming with a very valuable transitions lens on the Cryos Pro, maybe you want to go with it for that reason. Or over to the Shoei, because you also like the Arai, like the idea of that emergency removable inner liner to help people get the helmet off of you in the case of a crash. Or the fact that they have optional adjustable cheek pieces inside if you need just that little extra spacing for the perfect sizing. Maybe you want the option to have that transitions lens and you're not afraid to upgrade to it. Or like me, you just keep going back to the Shoei because this is absolutely the perfect fitted helmet. You almost don't even realize that you're wearing it half the time when you're out there on the road. 
Perhaps you want to go with the Bell MX-9 because, as I said, that MIPS technology inside there is a pretty great way also to avoid or mitigate risk in the event of a crash. You know, your, hel your helmet rotating a little bit instead of sticking to your head could be an important factor in the event of a crash. Also, you might want this one because it is the low price option on the table. Or as I mentioned, there's a long list of features on the Scorpion. You know, you've got that flippable chin bar, you've got the speed view visor that drops down in place of having to put in sunglasses or buy a separate transitions lens. You've got great ventilation and all those features that the rest of them have. There's a reason that you might wanna go with any one of these. And so that brings me back to ultimately the one biggest deciding factor for me and why I keep going with the Shoei Hornet. I said it before, it just fits me absolutely perfectly. Keep in mind that all manufacturers have a different model of what they think a head is going to look like in the best fitting design, much like shoes. Everybody's a little bit different. And so you might find out that you are the perfect shape head for a climb helmet or maybe a scorpion instead. Again, I keep coming back to the Shoei because it fits me perfectly. Also keep in mind that a company like Shoei, they have the Hornet available on mul multiple continents, but according to the average head shape, on that continent. So you might find that although you live in North America, but your head came from say Asia, you might wanna seek out one of the Asian versions of the Hornet to fit you the best. And also keep in mind that they offer, and some other ones do the option to adjust the liners with pieces that are thicker or thinner to give you a little more or less space inside the helmet if you need it. A second most important reason why you might choose one helmet over the other this comes down to actually testing and seeing what works behind the windshield of your motorcycle because all windshields and bikes are different. In addition, all our torso lengths are different. We all have different distances that we ride from the handlebars or from the windshield. The aerodynamics are gonna be different for everybody across all helmets, across all motorcycles, where you're riding in the world, your average speed, all these factors go into how well is this going to flow behind the windshield of the bike that you're gonna be riding on. For example, some time ago I was riding an Arai and I had an aftermarket windshield and the two of them at certain speeds just did not work together. And literally the wind and the buffeting and the aerodynamics were grabbing the peak, the visor on the Arai and fluttering, creating like a fluttering such that my eyeballs were actually oscillating inside the ocular cavities, just like hard boiled eggs causing a lot of pain. You don't want it. Believe me, you will know if you have a bad aerodynamic combination. One helmet might work with your ride and your setup and another one might not. So that might be a factor for you as well. And another key factor in deciding which one is the right one for you might be the noise levels that you experience within each of these helmets on your ride, on your setup. So for example, if a helmet is typically, if it's too large for you, it's simply gonna be a little noisier than it would be if it was proper fitting. And again, how is each of these helmets aerodynamically gonna work with your ride and your setup and your windscreen and the speeds that you're going. So you might have to do a little experimenting there. And again, you'll have to look into the return policies of each helmet that you're trying. Maybe you only have the option to sit there in front of the TV at home and feel how it is in terms of comfort. And maybe, you know, going out and eating a few bugs or whatever is gonna eliminate your return policy. So be careful with that, but keep in mind that they all will have different aerodynamic properties and may or may not work with your ride. And one more deciding factor for you on this might be just the simple notion that the more you spend, the more you get. It was such as true with a lot of things in this world that if you're going on the cheap end, you might eventually find out why it's a little bit on the cheap side. You know, the quality of construction, the features, the noise levels, all sorts of things might make you realize that it was something very important with your riding, with your safety and protection that you should have just spent a little bit more on to begin with. So as promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to give you some basic tips, things I've learned over many years and many miles. Call it life inside a helmet. Little tips that will make all this go better for you. First thing to consider is that when you're choosing your helmet, keep in mind that you probably want to start with it feeling a little snug on the, the, from the onset because it is going to give in just like a pair of gloves, just like a pair of shoes. It will take up a little bit of room like that and fit better as time goes on. Hopefully also you can choose that helmet again that is going to have as few high points or pressure points. You want as even a distribution of pressure around your skull as you can possibly get. Another great tip is to wear something like I do. I wear the sweat back or any kind of a do-rag or a bandana or some kind of a liner between your head and the liner of your helmet. And the main reason being, 
I've never had to wash the liner of one of my helmets since I started wearing that sweat vac. You'll see it in all our videos. I've always got the same red and black sweat vac on and it has kept me from ever having to take the time to wash the helmet out, which is a convenience. Everyone wants to do a simple little wash job like that when you can avoid it completely. That sweat vac is keeping the skin, the exfoliation of dead skin coming off of my scalp and keeping it from ending up in the helmet, which is I believe ultimately the main reason a helmet starts to stink. And the sweat vac is also a great option for just that little bit of temperature difference. It feels like in the hot weather, it's doing a little more to wick the moisture off of my scalp. And in cold weather, it's just that little bit more to keep me warm. So love the sweat vac and anything similar should do a good job for you as well. One more thing I actually don't recommend, if I can be clear on that, I don't recommend that you alter the helmet as it comes from the manufacturer for safety reasons. It's designed as it, as it is and you should keep it the way that it is. But if your head shape is such that you have a high point here and there or something that doesn't quite work with the lining of your helmet, especially in the case of the EPS foam that is pretty standard in most helmets, you could take your thumb and just press it down and compact in that spot where you need just a little bit of extra room. Now you obviously don't wanna do that because you're compromising the impact resistance and the integrity of the helmet as it was originally designed, right? You don't wanna crush foam that is ultimately supposed to be crushed in the instance of an emergency or a crash or something like that. So again, you could do it if you really need to, and some of us have to, just to make that little spot just a little bit roomier, and it's easy to do. You'll feel by just taking the butt of a screwdriver or your thumb, and you'll feel it will give away. Once you do make that little give and that bit of room in there, it's not returning, it's not gonna bounce back. That EPS foam is a one-time crush type of a foam, but you can do this if you need this, this for comfort. Another one would be to always carry the hardware necessary to keep your helmet working and functioning properly. So each of these comes with basically a toolless removal option of taking the visor and the shield off of the helmet. You know, it's basically just a quarter turn screw, a little thumb screw or something that you can do with simply a coin to remove again the shield and the visor if you were gonna go into uh, pure street mode or goggles or whatever you're switching the helmet around for. But again, dropping your helmet as you're accidentally doing whatever, it falls off the bike, hits the ground, and those plastic screws that are basically near the temple of your head, they're meant and designed to break away. They're supposed to break according to gaining their DOT or Snell or whatever certifications they have. They have to be able to break away again because you wouldn't want, for example, a fixed rigid visor that if you were tumbling around on the ground was to get caught on things, right? It's supposed to break away. But if you ever do break one of those screws, you're gonna be out there on the road looking for a replacement. You definitely don't wanna be putting uh, steel screw that you find at the local hardware shop right there up against your temple, right? So most helmets you'll find come with a, one or two of these extra screws. Keep them somewhere in that pocket or that zipper that is always with you, always on your bike every time you ride because you might need them and they're a pain to find if you're on the road. One last thought, wear earplugs. You know, everybody says you should and it's up to you if you want to or not, but they say that prolonged exposure to, what is it, 95 plus decibels can result in Permanent hearing damage might be true. Tinnitus, uh, last I saw the case of tinnitus, nobody's quite sure why it happens, but I think you'll be happier and feel more comfortable and perhaps protect your hearing by wearing earplugs or some kind of hearing protection, and especially at high speeds. Life inside a helmet can get pretty loud. Before a final question for you, I'm gonna say a quick thanks to Pro Caliber Motorsports and the Moto Shop from here in Bend, Oregon. They set us up with a couple of helmets that our staff did not have on hand immediately at this time. So my question for you is actually more of a request. Please, in the comments below, let us know which of these helmets or another one you have gone with. Which size is it you're riding and which motorcycle you're riding behind which windshield? Are you riding the original windshield or an aftermarket? What we're trying to do here is teach the riding community which aerodynamic setups work with the aerodynamics of each of these helmets. It'll be important for you also to comment on your height and your weight and your inseam so riders can tell, are they like me? Are they short-legged and long torso? Or are they long torso and short-legged? You need to know where your helmet is sitting behind the windscreen in order to accurately compare yourself with other riders and their aerodynamic combinations out there. Doing this is gonna help everybody from the standpoint of inventory levels, supply chain, reverse logistics, having to return these products to the manufacturers or the retailers. Keep in mind, that's an 
unnecessary cost that is coming back to all of us in the cost of buying these products in the first place. So let's help each other be efficient and smart and make the right choice to begin with. So lastly, you've got to tell YouTube that you want to see more of our videos. You've got to like and subscribe and hit the notifications button again, letting the algorithms know that you like what we're producing so that we keep making more videos for you. Thanks for watching everyone. Right on. We'll see y'all there. I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> Your brain's in the way. Yeah, it's still there. Your really? belt. Yeah, there we go. And action.